day, good day, good day, everyone. No matter where it is, in whatever part of the world you are in, I hope you are having a good day. <laughs> okay, um, today I'm basically doing a third installment of how to meditate. It's been a long time since I've done a how to meditate video. Um, and I did notice that it was helpful to some people. Uh, a lot of people. So, um, I decided that I would go ahead and record another meditation video for you. But this time, I'm just going to basically show you how to use tools. Um, there are some tools that you can use to help you meditate. Um, um, or to even help you go into a deeper meditation. Um, so I'm going to actually turn my camera around. Um, one of the things to keep in mind, when you're first starting out, um, you can start out slow. Um, five minutes. If you can, if you can sit still and, and clear your mind for five minutes, you're on your way. Then gradually work up your way up 10 minutes, 15 minutes, um, until you're at least meditating for 20 minutes a day. Um, or... Um, I would say to make the goal at least 20 minutes. There are people who meditate for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, eight hours, 24 hours. So um, I think that 20 minutes is a good daily practice to incorporate into your life. So um, starting with five and working your way up to 20 minutes of meditation a day. It's just good to practice that mindfulness and just sitting still. It helps you to stay calm. The more you practice it, the better you get at it. And when issues come up in your life, they aren't as bad or you're not as triggered as deeply sometimes. Sometimes you still are, but sometimes you're not. Because you, you've, you've gotten that practice in. You've practiced your breathing. Um, I don't think I talked about breathing techniques um, in the last meditation. So you do want to take... Um, a few deep cleansing breaths. So, um, inhaling in. So basically in through your nose and out through your mouth. Um, you can hold it and count. Um, you can count as long as you can hold it. Um, because that's kind of the goal, to hold your breath as long as you possibly can, and then release it. It actually builds up your lungs, um, especially, especially for people who smoke. Not that it's going to, you know, um, treat anything. I'm not necessarily saying that, but it still helps you breathe better when you practice your breathing techniques. Um, because it does open up your lungs. It expands your lungs because, you know... Um, even just environmental toxins, chemicals in the air, smog, um, exhaust, all of those different things. Um, those are in our young lungs too. Paint fumes, if you've ever, you know, painted any type of chemical fumes, um, those get trapped, you know, into our lungs too. Um, so again, breathing is a, a, a good way to help expand your lungs and, and help you breathe better. Um, of course, there are herbs and essential oils that you can use or supplements that you can take um, to improve your lungs, um, but that's another video. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, um, you know, basically breathing is a tool that you can use before you start meditating. Um, it does help you to relax. Um, as you're meditating, you can also think of the word relax, and that'll help you relax even more. Um, you can think of the word calm, and you will start to be calm. Um, you can, you know, say it to yourself, say it out loud, you know, depending on what space you're in and what you feel, com what your comfort level is. Um, but, um, breathing, um, and saying I am calm or I am relaxed or relax, those are affirmations. So you're affirming to yourself and to your body, I am calm, I am relaxed. And I am basically ready to start clearing my mind so that I can, you know, um, improve my life, basically. Meditation, um, 
that's how I see meditation. It does imp- help it to improve your life, um, your overall um, well-being, mental, emotional, um, even physical. Um, and it's, again, it's just good practice to have. So always remember, sit comfortable comfortably whatever that means to you I know that some people believe that you shouldn't cross anything but if it if if you feel comfortable sitting with your legs crossed then that's how you should meditate because that's how you feel comfortable um and you can still have your palms up and making sure that nothing else is crossed um but um you can again you can sit with your legs straight out you could bend one leg and have the other leg extended. Um, whatever you feel comfortable doing, however you feel comfortable sitting. If you feel comfortable sitting on the floor on a yoga mat, or if you want to sit on the sofa now, um, you can sit in the, on the sofa, a chair, on the bed. Um, be careful with meditating in bed though especially if you decide to lie down to meditate because you could end up falling asleep and so then your meditation wouldn't be complete Um, especially if you decide to um, meditate to some relaxing music you will fall asleep (laughs) I guarantee Um, you'll start you know about two three minutes in you snoring <laughs> didn't even make it to five <laughs> so um, sit comfortably you know if you if you want to do your breathing first do so if you want to just get straight into your meditation then so be it um, you can do that but okay so here's to the tools I am going to discuss all right um, let me see I need to turn my camera around <laughs> Maybe I don't think I know how. Hmm. Let's see. Nope, I don't know how. So, how about this? Okay. One of the things that you can use is a diffuser. Um, a diffuser is going to allow you to use essential oils like let's say for example lavender which most people know know, helps you to relax and even fall asleep Um, so if you have a diffuser and I'm just using lavender as an example you can use just about any essential oil of your choice that you would like that has whatever benefits that you feel you need at that time during your meditation so if you need um, clarity, you can use um, an essential oil for clarity. Um, so, But I'm just using lav- lavender in, as an example, but I wanted to give you that disclaimer because I don't want you to think that I'm just saying, oh, only put lavender in your diffuser because that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so you want to relax during your meditation. You want to be calm. Um, you may even want to go to sleep. So let's say you can you will put um, lavender in your diffuser of course you can put essential oils in your diffuser all day every day throughout the day while you're sleeping and everything because like I said if you're using something like lavender and what you're wanting to do is be calm and relax or even get some some rest this is one of the things that that's going to do for you lavender it doesn't really make me sleepy but it does really put me in a, a, a relaxed state Um, So sometimes I burn it throughout the day just to, you know, prevent like anxieties um, or anything that I feel may be going on within me at that moment because I am in the process of healing for other reasons, but I'm not going to get into that. Anyway, (laughs) so uh, diffuser, um, you can use it during meditation or you can use it all day every day or you can only use it while you're sleeping so if what you want to do is sleep lavender is going to help you relax and go to and fall asleep Um, so um, I like to use peppermint lemongrass I mean whatever essential oils you want 
um, you can use. Um, there are all different kinds of diffusers. They come in all different price ranges. Um, of course, you can go to Amazon, but of course, you can go to places like CVS or Walgreens as well um, because they do still carry they, they do carry diffusers, and as a matter of fact, that's where I purchased mine. I have two diffusers, and they both came from CVS, okay? But, of course, Walmart has them. <clears throat> Another thing that you can use to meditate is a singing bowl. Um... I haven't really mastered it yet, so I don't know how to make it sing, <laughs> so I just, <laughs> I just hit it like a gong. Um, you're still going to get that vibration or the energy from the singing bowl, um, but at, at some point I will um, actually take the time to figure out what I'm doing. Um... Yeah, it's just not singing for me. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But anyway, um, sometimes before I meditate um, or do affirmations, um, I will just, um, you know, strike the singing bowl one time um, again just to get that vibration and that energy going um, so this is a tool that you can use before you meditate um, sound has always been something that our ancestors used to heal up heal us um, so sound water um, the sunlight a lot of natural, of course, herbs, um, a lot of natural remedies or modalities were used. Um, so um, this singing bowl may just look like, you know, a little bowl with some writing on it, but it actually can help to heal you. Um, because again, sound is something that our ancestors used for healing um, in the past. So some of these traditions are just coming back. Um, some people never um, stopped practicing them, and some people did. So um, those of us who stopped, um, it's just coming back out into the fore, uh, into the spotlight, I guess. And um, we're being reintroduced to some of the things um, that have always been done. That you know, like I said, they are. People do use tools like this traditionally and have never stopped. So, uh, again, this is just this is a tool that you can use before you meditate, just to get some sound healing going in your body. Um, you can strike it once, you can strike it a few times. You can learn how to make it sing. Um, again, that's totally up to you. Of course, they come in different sizes as well. Um, <clears throat> whatever size you decide to buy is totally up to you i did go to um, a healing sound bath it was awesome there were all kinds of like african ancient horns that um it was at least two or three of them that he he would blow and then they, you know the, they had a bunch of singing bowls and big gong Ooh! so big gongs so you remember the gong show how they used to have a gong for those of you who are old enough to remember if not you can google it um, but on the gong show, it was a big gong. And if somebody got the wrong answer, they would just strike it. So, well, okay. It doesn't work on the bottom, but there's a little thing right there. So. But anyway, they, it was it was beautiful. I think it was about an hour. And it was beautiful. So, we just... Uh, we were just there and uh, enjoying the sound and, you know, enjoying the healing space, enjoying the energy of other people. It was a very beautiful experience. So, again, you can do this for yourself. You can go to a practice, you know, someone who practices sound healing. Um, or you can even go on YouTube and pull up sound bath. 
Um, and of course, there are videos that you can watch um, of people who have um, um, recorded themselves doing a um, sound healing um, um, session. <clears throat> Okay, so that's that. And of course, well, I shouldn't say of course, but <laughs> one of the other things that you can do is burn you burn some sage. Um, as I've mentioned before, um, sage is used a lot in the Catholic Church. Sage has been used a lot historically by Native Americans and other um aboriginal or native cultures and it does help to cleanse your space or your mind and your body um so you would just either um fan it you know i like to I fan it around uh, and then i just kind of go around my body and you know even i lift up my feet and i do underneath my feet and i go behind myself now if someone's with you um and you have a partner um then they can actually sage you so they can wand you down you know especially the back they can get the real the back of you better than you could yourself obviously um and so you can you know um when the sage is longer you can probably hold it in your hand but as it starts to get a little small like this you may not want to hold it because it will start to fall apart um but um you can um, burn it in a fire resistant um, container preferably metal um or you can get like a like something like this like an avalon shell and you can put um, a pile of salt in the middle and you can sit the sage in there um, um, because abalone shells are not fireproof if, if I'm not mistaken um, um, or you can just kind of allow the sage to burn in your space so you want to get a really good what I call a really good burn so you want to um, probably light it um, with a candle or at the stove so that it lights really well and it lasts longer um, and you want it to burn for a while um, if you get some air to it so if you can go outside and it's a, there's maybe a breeze blowing that'll help to in, enhance the, the, the fire um, and, and help it to burn longer <clears throat> um, so if you want it to just burn as you're meditating throughout your space you can do that um, also bringing in um, new energy with your Palo Santo um, you can do that before or after you meditate and you know it's up to you um, depends on what you were meditating on um, but it's still going to help to <clears throat> clear your mind and bring in new good thoughts before you start your meditation if you do it before okay um, and I don't know if you can hear it but the other thing, let's see, which way is it? Here it is. So the other thing that I decided to do, or I not decided to do, one of the other things that I do um, when I'm meditating is listen to um, videos. <clears throat> um, this one is called I Love Myself, 528 Hertz healing self-love frequency meditation and sleep music positive energy cleanse you can see that so um yeah so i will sometimes listen to music while i'm meditating and it's usually a frequency that's good for us because most of the music that we listen to is on the wrong frequency and so it's not good for a meditative state um, and um, 
So I use this to meditate or sometimes to fall asleep. Like if I'm having a hard time falling asleep, I'm, I'm not really um, the type of person that will probably take like a Tylenol or something like that. I'm probably going to do something natural, um, like listen to um, some natural sounds um, or some meditation or some sound healing. Um, or maybe I'll make myself some valerian root tea or something, but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so this is one of the things, and, you know, whatever time you meditate is totally up to you. I know one of the things Russell Simmons says is he does not like to meditate before he's, you know, he doesn't like to start his day before he meditates at least once, but I think he said he meditates at least twice a day. Otherwise, he'd be cussing everybody out. <laughs> He still might cuss people out, but um, he's much more calm in a more calm and relaxed state where he meditates. So I know um, my current position I'm in, uh, when I first started, I would go um, and I would make sure that I meditated before I started and practice yoga. So that's a good practice to um, get in the habit of. It's, it's challenging to keep up with. Um, sometimes um, you really have to make sure that you're um, staying focused on that, um, <clears throat> you know, because you could go in and be distracted. Of course, you could always do it before you leave home. Um, you would probably just need to, you know, maybe wake up an extra 30 minutes to an hour ahead of time to make sure that you can get everything sit up, set up and situated that you can really relax um another thing that you can do is drink tea you know some type of relaxing calming tea like a chamomile maybe not lavender because you might be sleepy at work all day <laughs> um, i love to put lemon in my tea i typically don't add any sweeteners to my tea um just the the the, the tea itself the herbs in the tea itself um and the uh the lemon. I love to make my own teas because then I can have, you know, whatever benefits I'm looking for from the tea, I can have in one cup. Like, I don't have to have all these different tea bags. Um, and then when you use fresh herbs, you don't have to steep as much because you're still going to get, you're getting the pure um, uh, herbs. Um, so I like to make my own tea. Um, and drink them and enjoy them, like I said, with a little lemon. Um, and so this is another thing that will help you relax. And as a matter of fact, I have some tea now. And, um, yeah, it helps to relax you and keep you calm. And it's great for meditation. It's another tool that you can use um, to help you relax and get into that meditative state or prepare yourself for meditation or prepare yourself for, for sleeping. Um, you know, you can drink teas for sleeping. Um, you can substitute tea for coffee. Like the tea that I'm drinking now is a chai tea that's great for people who drink coffee and they're wanting to maybe drink less caffeine. Or if they're told for whatever reason that they should avoid caffeine. Um, I, I, I Typically when I'm talking to someone about their dietary changes, I don't say, I don't try to snatch things away. Um, I just say gradually make certain changes. So there's like chicory root you can get from a Whole Foods or any type of um, store that sells um, like an Earth Fair or Sprouts. Um, What's the other one? Um, Fresh Market. Any of those retailers you can purchase um, from. <clears throat> but what I like to do is, um, this is chai tea. So I have chai tea with almond milk. Um, um, and if I, if I did the chicory root, chicory root is pretty bitter like coffee. So really, it tastes more like coffee. Um, there are other coffee substitutes. There's a new company that came out. Uh, I can't remember the name of, of it, but it's a, a, a 
a coffee substitute but chicory root is a coffee substitute again you can buy it from whole foods it probably is a little ex expensive than that brand name the brand name because it's just a brand name but chicory root it don't even say coffee substitute and you would just treat it just like as regular coffee but instant coffee so you would put it in um, your creamer or your hot water um, it, it tastes similar I have had it before I've had a whole jar probably was about a 16 to 24 ounce jar so it was a pretty big jar lasted a long time I finished the jar um, this was probably around 2014 um, but then I kind of stopped drinking coffee after that like I still drink it every once in a while but like I got rid of my coffee pot after that and you know so if I have a cup, I'll just go to a store and buy myself a cup. But for the most part, at home, I just keep teas. Um, and so, you know, I do my best to leave the coffee alone. But if I have a taste for coffee, again, something like chicory root or chai tea, and you can still put your milk in it. Um, and instead of sugar, I don't always put sugar. Sometimes I put sugar. I'm saying sugar, and I don't mean sugar. I mean a sweetener. Um, normally, what I use is honey. Um, I don't particularly care for stevia or, you know, or anything like that. I prefer honey. So, if I put a sweetener, it's honey. Um, otherwise, it's just um, the tea bag with the milk. Um, and then, depending on the almond milk, some I do make my own almond milk, but do, sometimes I do buy the almond milk from the store as well. So if it's an almond milk that has already been pre-sweetened, I definitely don't add any extra sweetener um, to it. Because for me, it's sweet enough. Um, I know a lot of people like extra sugar, but for me, it's sweet enough. Um, so you, you would adjust it to your liking or your taste. <clears throat> um, and if you, you know, if you like stevia and you want to use that or one of the other, you know, natural, well, you can use whatever you want. <laughs> But um, sugar is just not something that's good for the body, especially if you're about to meditate because it's going to uh, do the opposite of what you want, which is a calm and relaxed state. It's not going to put you in a calm, relaxed state. So that's one of the reasons why I do my best to avoid some of the sugar. Um, it's going to affect your brain. It affects your brain in a different way. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, that wasn't ladylike at all. <laughs> It was just my natural instinct. Okay, that means it's time to go. <laughs> um, but I hope this video was helpful. Um, I hope that you got some tips that you can use. And I hope that you start uh, your journey to meditation. Namaste.